Ok. Um, so I will start with questions. I like to ask questions. You know, the way uh, lecturers are, um, we like access to any questions. And here, they are, uh, uh, they are, they are based knowledge on it. So feel free to write the answer. Maybe I wouldn't let you turn off your turn on your mic so that we don't get all rowdy. Who can tell us what he understands by data data science? Just type in a few seconds. Or okay, yeah, okay. Maybe I should let you speak. You raise up your hand if you have a queue, then you can speak. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what I understand by data science is a like a is a branch of uh, knowledge which deals with how to how to ask question, how to how to gather, ask, analyze, and make re recommendation with data to make uh, data dri uh, driven decision. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything. Anybody want to share? Okay. Um, I'll work on yes, services extracting, extracting useful information from data. And my friend Bashir says, uh, said is the military field that uses scientific method, process, and algorithms and systems extract insight from structured and unstructured okay thank you Michelle. this seems like very textbook kind of answer um, so i will take just from two more people then i will move on i don't know who is first on the queue umar okay what i understand by data science it's uh, it's a field of study where uh, data are collected, uh, processed, analyzed for a particular purpose and being used for a particular purpose. Okay, um, last person, Ibrahim. So what I understand with data science is um, a field that deals with getting insightful information from data to make a meaningful decision. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, Gideon said, um, data science is a field of study that combines statistics programming to analyze data for uh, making informed decisions. And then Babangida said, uh, data science is a field of science that deal with vast knowledge, the unlock and same pattern and all of that. Babangida, are you supposed to be here? Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, for that, input. you can go ahead and turn off your mic. Okay. So most of you said uh, the same thing in different, uh, in different ways, in different matters. So there is no fixed definition of what data science yeah, uh, is. Uh, many people have spoken about it, but generally, data science is using data and science to better understand the world. So we have data science, the two components are data and science. So using data and science to, to better understand the world. Um, most of you have mentioned things that are very important, which I want to repeat, mentioning multidisciplinary fields and all of that. I'll repeat all of that in my talk. But yeah, um, data science is an intersection of many fields. It's both a science and an art and many things in between. Um, Ibrahim, you can uh, drop your hand. So, um, data science is using data and science to better understand the world. Uh, it may be through one of the following activities, exploring data. Some of you mentioned ex data exploration or data acquisition or all of that, identifying patterns and trends in, in the world. Um, uh, Okay, uh, I wanted to explain what data is, but probably you all know what is data. It's just our observation of the worlds of occurrence, incidences, and all of that. That's what is data. And then we explore that data to identify patterns and trends in the real world. And then 
doing inferences from the data. Uh, when we have a data, which is a collection of uh, observations of the world happenings and everything around us, we try to make reliable inference, understanding of the world based on that data. And then all, uh, what we could do is making predictions about the world. Uh, we have insights, observation of the world, our data. And then so um, we make informed guesses. We try to say based on A, B, C, then this is going to happen. Uh, there is a slight difference between inference, uh, inferences and then making predictions, inferences, understanding what it means, and then making predictions based on those understanding then what's going to happen in the future. And then so uh, one of the many ways to do is data science fits the broader scheme or the science established. So we have three main fields, if we like to see uh, that form of data science, uh, hiking skills, or bet better, let's say programming, your programming capabilities, then maths and statistics knowledge, uh, because most of the techn techniques we use in data science is statistics actually. It's data science can be seen as an advanced statistics. And then substantive, substantive expertise, this can be any field because data science is applicable to various fields to, to be able to adequately use data science in that field, we need to have strong knowledge or expertise in that field. And that's why uh, a statistician, I can skills computer scientists and traditional researcher or area could be three different people who collaborate. And this is what mostly happened uh, when you want to, in many instances, in many, when you, when you are involved in, um, data science project, data science society, in many instances, we'll be working with many different fields, uh, people from different backgrounds, from science, from art, from philosophy, from economics, to work together and do something meaningful. Okay, who can do data science? So, um, this, course is based on a, a, a previous course called Data Science for Everyone. There is a popular book on that, Data Science for Everyone, and Data Science is truly for everyone. Uh, irrespective of your background, Data Science is for you. It's all around us, all around what we do. Data Science is around us. Uh, data visualization in the news. Now our news comes with various forms of visualizations based on what they are trying to, the news they are trying to transmit. Um, that's Data Science or the models that predict everything, the, the pand uh, pa uh, pandemics, market. Uh, many of you are into the currency and you, 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 you many at times see predictions on when, when it's going to go up, when it's going to go down and all of that, or even weather, uh, weather forecasting. And um, social media companies Put all the information in our faces, whatever you have, kind of data generated on social media, and all of that. And then, um, analysis and research informing decisions everywhere from corporate web, uh, boardrooms to governments to local non profit organizations. Uh, sometimes ago, I gave a talk, I um, saying that no, no government, no responsible government can be able to make any reasonable. Uh, leadership who run of a country without proper manage, management of data because uh, now we have we have tools that enable us to understand data and how to utilize this data and so to be able to adequately make informed decisions we need data and we need we need that data and the moment we have that data we have various uh, data science techniques methodologies that will populate us yeah. We do this components now, all of them do that. So it's all around us. Whatever you do, you need data science knowledge to be able to do it well. Otherwise, you will not be doing it as what well as I do. So it's no longer possible to about data science and applications in this world. Uh, uh, but I can meet, uh, you can meet everyone except um, so your data is likely being consumed. Okay, so. Uh, if even if you believe you are in a field that doesn't really rely on data or data science at all, 
you can't avoid data science. You can see what I do, my background, my field. Most of you are from scientific background, which needs data science, but there are people that me feel that uh, their field didn't need data science in any way in their work. You still need knowledge of data science because whatever you are doing, your entire life is being recorded and it's been used as a data for some informed decisions. So you need to be able to understand what the data you do, um, what the data you generate is being used for and how and how you can protect yourself in terms of your privacy and all of that. So you, there is no green away. Data science is for everybody and everybody should learn data science. So then uh, a continuation of who can do data science. Uh, as I've said earlier on, data science is fundamentally in this, 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 this priority by nature. It's uh, cut across many fields. To make discoveries, we need to do much more than just run data proof and see algorithms. And that's what scares most people off thinking it's hardcore programming, it's just programming, so you just run algorithms, but data science is much more than that. We need many things. Uh, I've, I've, I've created this previously. We need substantial knowledge. We need to have knowledge of um, the data science itself and then of what whatever field, whatever domain we are applying data science to. And then uh, we need the ability to be able to think like a scientist. Uh, it's a data science. We need to approach solving problems in a scientific uh, approach using scientific method. And then we need to have skills in mathematics and statistics because they are the foundation of data science. Most of the things we do in data science are based on what, uh, statistics, statistics. And then we need philosophical and practical understanding of ethics because you have this powerful tool in, at your hands. Uh, it's powerful what you can do with it then you need to understand the implications and um, practical uh, consequences of whatever you do with people's data or with, with, with whatever kind of data. So you need to have that background. And then um, what is also maybe sometimes be overlooked, but it's really, really important is creativity, your imagination. Um, and my I and to, you can give the same data to 200 people to come up with anything. And then uh, you really need to be creative to understand how best, and this is an art um, to understand how best can you take advantage of that. And of course, uh, the last but not the least, you need to have a programming scholars. And that is why it's not all the time that you will be um, the strong, the only one to do data to do some of your research or some of your work sometimes you need to work with people with people with domain aspect now you want to do your research or you want to analyze medical data you need expert on medical domain or you want to do uh, in the financial domain you need somebody from that not just that on your own you just try and do everything on your own way when when you don't have substance substantive learning of that okay um so um, I've said data science is a science and then an art. So data science as a science because we need to evaluate the merits of a testable hypothesis. First of all, you want to make a hypothesis, uh, an assumption uh, based on your data using empirical evidence that has been supplied to rigorous testing. This is scientific approach. This is what we do any in any science uh, when we want to do a study with first of uh, the hypothesis. We have our um, methods to test our hypothesis and then using empirical methods, we try to deduce our conclusions and that's what we do with data science. And then we need to be precise about how we do our conclusions from our observations. Um, uh, you need to be very clear, uh, objective about all the methods you use to go from E to B, from your data to your conclusion or observation or whatever you do, and then how confident we are in those results. Uh, that's what makes um, science from scientific and art research. Um, in science, we try, we try as much as possible to remove subjectivity. We try to be objective based on our observations. So you have to be precise about how we do our conclusions based on the, our observations and all of that. 
in an objective manner. And then, yeah, we do the actual tendencies. We build and evaluate huge data sets, data sets from multiple sources using scientific, statistical, and all of that approaches. And then the out of it, whatever we have, we need to translate that uh, in, 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 in a social or art manner. How does it translate to phenomenon? You have your scientific jargon. What does that mean to the world? What problem is that solving? And all of that. And then uh, we try to develop an intuition of fusion principles like for, for good basis, for bad of data and models we've been talking about. Responsible AI, uh, data, uh, artificial intelligence for good, for social good, and all of that discussions, which are mostly from philosophy background and ethics, which is science, which is art product. And then the creativity when deciding how to um what to measure, how to measure, and then how to use it in our analysis. The creativity we use in our data science is an art, even what sometimes when you want to visualize your data site, what best way to use it. We have many visualizations, many kind of charts, by chart, whatever. So what will make the best kind of uh, presentation in terms of Conveying the most catchy knowledge. Um, apologies for my boring slide. It contains no, no, no images and all of that. Okay. Um. My title is wrong here. So this should be thinking like a scientist. So. Um, this is a question. So does data speak for itself or it's equivalent to the truth? Um, we have a few minutes, but I have two more slides aside from this, so no, no problem. So does data speak for itself or it's always says the truth? Anybody can answer, but you need to raise up your hand or you tap in the answer. Do you believe that uh, data itself can speak for itself or it, with the moment you have your data, then it's the truth? Okay, yeah, yeah, even though I would have loved to have a different person. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Uh, data on its own cannot speak of for, for itself, except through uh, maybe you as the interpreter or the person interpreting it. This person is going to make the data useful. But having the data without having the proper person to interpret it through visualization and other techniques, data is almost useless. Okay, so does it represent the truth? If you have data, then that's the actual truth. You are right. Is that the case? There are two segments of the question. Not, not always, sir. Not, not always, sir. Sometimes, <laughs> because uh, uh, the, the data can be biased or something like that. So, who wants to say something? You can as well type in. Okay, data does not represent the truth, and then it does not speak for itself. Uh, we, the scientists, uh, take advantage of the data set to make uh, useful insights, and then data is not equivalent to the truth because the data itself is subject to our interpretation. So while data does not lie, our interpretation of it may vary. And then we need to understand that data is collected, interpreted, and subject to analysis based on human perspective. This human's perspectives makes it not equivalent to the truth. We can have different perspectives. And then I have another question. Is science always correct or definitive? Uh, I, I will not... Um, pose the questions you know data is not always correct or definitive yeah not data rather science science is an evolving field making conclusions based on evidence so and with time with more research uh, our understanding may change it doesn't mean the other one is wrong it means we have a better understanding so science is not always correct or always definitive 
it can change based on our own based on our new findings and new research and that's why uh, those from scientific background especially uh, people from um uh, physical not physical sciences uh, not, is it natural sciences we know more um, scientific process is an iterative and incomplete by nature everybody starts from somewhere and then uh, he makes his conclusions and then someone takes over is iterative that's how it is by nature it's always incomplete so because it's incomplete it cannot always be definitive or always be correct because it's incomplete when you stop here somebody will take off from there and make new findings new conclusions so whenever you're exploring your data set do it with curiosity and bravery but you need to be open to the uncertainty and then you always need to seek feedback when you are unsure about the next steps in your data analysis or whatever you don't know about don't um, don't be too definitive that i have the skills i have whatever whatever then i can do I, I can make any kind of conclusions and then do not dismiss studies based on disagreement when you have your study that is contradicting other persons when you think their own is wrong. Uh, do not be too hard, too harsh. You need to provide constructive criticism and identify scientific shortcomings in the study for improvement. That's what the scientific process is. We, uh, my research will, my study may disagree with your own study, but at the end, what is more important is the ability to provide constructive criticism and then you identify the shortcomings the gaps the lacuna in this study for improvement thank you very much uh gideon your, your, your answer is up on the chat so uh you need to think like a scientist consider the following questions which cover broad uh, range of substance areas um why do some people get cancer and others don't why does war exist why might we experience depression and anxiety how can we eradicate malaria what are intervention what interventions are optimal what makes one football team better than the other how can we predict which sort of companies will succeed these are a range of questions that you can about different backgrounds that you can ask yourself. And this is how the kind of questions we ask whenever you want to do anything in science. You know, mostly in scientific fields, we have um, research questions, while uh, in other fields, the in, we can use this, it's not a hard rule, but while we use uh, research questions more, others use hypotheses, uh, they test their null hypothesis and all of that, whatever. So uh, in science, to be able to do our own research, we come up with such questions. And these are the kind of research question, questions that we can ask ourselves uh, in data science. Ultimately, these questions are about causation. And these questions are about causations and causal effects. What causes something and then the effects of it happening. So then we can find what are the causes of cancer, what causes war, what causes depression, what causes malaria, what causes uh, uh, success rather than failure. This is the questions. And all of these questions, when you want to answer them, it ends up with why do some people get cancer and others? To be able to answer this, we need to know what causes cancer. Why does war exist? We need to know what are the causes of war. And all of that, uh, in, that in that manner. So the central thinking like a scientist and uncovering causal relationships in scientific method, we can lay out it out as a series of iterative steps. First, observation. We need to observe all, we need to observe the world and everything around us, the patterns we see. Then we need to ask questions, ask why these patterns exist, and then theory. Um, think about what might explain these patterns. That is the theory. If you have your questions, you have your observation, then you go back to theory. What might explain these patterns? Uh, and then you have your hypothesis, make a testable statement about what our theory will predict, and then test. We measure uh, our hypothesis, uh, look for support for the hypothesis, and then we update the theory. Probably uh, uh, we need to update 
it have some finding or put uh, it better to, better to this images and then we repeat. So this is the end, but uh, 